and okay. good we're in yeah thank you hey everybody welcome welcome to chapter 8 of 18 uh, we're halfway there almost tomorrow night will be the halfway point uh, once we're through that uh, I am uh, covering years 88 through 90 where I turned 21 excuse me 21 22 23 mm -hmm. Uh, big years again, just like last night. Uh, last night were my immediate post-high school years. These are my college years and working hard years and partying years. And I'll have some tomorrow night too, trust me. Uh, 88 was a big year for me because I moved out of my father's house and started living on my own. And I always tell people this, especially young people, I really feel sorry for young people today and I understand the student debt thing. When I started living on my own, I was making $5 an hour at the movie theater. Um, I could uh, pay for a semester of college with $1,000. That includes books and everything. And I was paying two and a quarter, two twenty-five a month to live downtown. I lived at 16th and Logan. I lived on the east side of downtown. I lived in a great building. My stepdad let me know about it. Um, he was doing exterminating there, but I saw like one roach in the six years I was there, five and a half years, whatever I was there. I was there a long time. Um, it was a great place. It was called Grosvenor Arms. It's still there. It was built in the 30s. The walls were thick. I was able to study and get my sleep and uh, live my life there. So that was pretty great. So I started living on my own. I was able to pay my way through college. I didn't have a car, but I didn't need a car. I was close to everything I needed. School, work, it worked out. Um, started going to Rock Island, and I was a 21 club, and I started uh, dancing every Sunday night. I would go to Rock Island, and we I joined a lot of my friends there, and it was like their their goth industrial progressive night. So I started enjoying those groups a lot. In fact, in this picture, I have my Depeche Mode Violator tour shirt on um, from 1990, I believe. Yeah, that's when that that album and that, uh, so that was, this must have been summer of 90 when this picture was taken. So I'm about nearly 23 there. Uh, another thing about the summer of 90, let's just get this out of the way now. That's when I finally lost my virginity. Yeah, it's 22, guys. That's a little Woo! embarrassing. Thanks, son. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's embarrassing. Uh, I'm not, but hey, and I wasn't definitely not for lack of trying. Um, you know, my friend Joya, uh, actually, she will say I lost it in 88 with her, but I think we'd both like to put that experience behind us. <laughs> I think we've both had a lot better sexual and uh, sensual experiences since. So I, I chalk it up to 90. And it was kind of funny, the girl I was seeing at the time was 26, so I feel kind of cool about that. The girl that I uh, lost my quote-unquote virginity to in 1990. I remember pretty vividly because the Final Four was here in Denver that year, March Madness. And... Uh, it was the finals. It was uh, Duke versus um, UNLV, and that's when UNLV had a really amazing team. They were up by like 26 points at halftime, and we were both cheering for Duke, and we said, well, I guess uh, we're bored, so let's have sex. All right, great. So there's that. Um, let's go back to the late 80s, though. I, I had a lot of fun at Tivoli. I made light, the theater, the movie theater I worked at, uh, made lifelong friends there. Did a lot of stuff. Um, oh, I almost forgot to add this in 1989 with my friends uh, Eric and Josh and Tom and Troy. We went um, uh, skydiving uh, Labor Day weekend of 1989. I just turned 22, or I was about to turn 22. And uh, yeah, we did that. That was pretty cool. And it was scary because nowadays you are in a tandem jump, right? You have a guy, usually, maybe a woman, but pretty much most, most of the experienced jumpers are men. Uh, you, you're attached to him, he's on your back. It's a little weird, I think. Back then, when we jumped, it was called Static Line, and it, you did an all-day training course, and you, you got, they trained you to you know, kick your way out if the line's twisted on your chute, um, if, if, if your uh, chute was in an impossibly bad place to rip that chute and you had an emergency chute. And it was quite an experience. Uh, it was, I probably spend most of the time now that I'm there on this day because it was crazy. Uh, you know, being a really intelligent 22-year-olds, 23-year-olds, whatever we were, we decided it was smart to pull an all-nighter. 
<laughs> this was out in Strasburg, by the way. So we, we pulled an all-nighter here in Denver. We drove out to Strasburg. You had to be there early because, like I say, it's an all-day course. You know, I think it's like a six-hour course. You get there at eight. I think around two, they start doing the jumps. And there were ten people in the class. There were us, or eight, actually. Us five. Two other guys that were chain smoking the whole time because it was 1989. You could still smoke indoors. And then this one woman that was there by herself, and she looked really looked freak at, freaked out. We were, everyone was freaked out. And it was funny, the video they show you um, it was really funny and cheesy. It was the 80s, so they show this video of this guy who claims he's a lawyer, and uh, he and the whole video is in an airplane. He's like, you know, just telling me all these rules, and here's the deal. And then right at the end of the video, he says, when you sign this document, document it means you can't sue us. And if you sue us, you can't win. <laughs> he's like, have a good time. And he bails out of the plane with a helmet, a briefcase, and his and his parachute on his back and we're like okay that's what we're in for um we had a great time though we all jumped out we all you know we did it i guess um it was fun i can also tell you about the jump uh we i went last i was on the, in the last jump of the day and it's it's tiny this it's a tiny single engine plane it's 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 meant to seat two and have some stuff in the back and it seats two, and you're part of the stuff in the back. It's like they have a, a, a pilot, and then the seat's taken out because you got to go through the door and hang off the strut before you jump. It's crazy. But so where the seat, the passenger seat would be is a guy called the jump master who helps you. And then it was me, my best friend Troy Hunt, and a third guy, big guy, uh, going for his first uh, a non-static line, meaning his first free fall jump where he did all his own stuff. And this guy was pretty funny because he was just like in this crazy day glow pink and green jumpsuit and he was old by by uh, in my opinion to be uh, doing parachuting he, he's in his 50s and you know this guy was, it was pretty cool in a way it's like looking back it's like yeah he was tackling his midlife crisis what a badass but so, and he but like I said he's a big guy me and Troy are probably around 160 170 pounds this guy is up upwards of 200 and uh, so, like I say, you go out and you grab the strut of the wing, you know, there's a little step, and you hang off, and then you just let go. And this guy just lets go. And, like, you know, as, as soon as you let go, and when you do static line jump, you're only flying at 4,000 feet, you rip your chute out, right? As soon as you, you're, they, you yell arch, and you rip when you do that. We didn't because static line opens the chute on its own. Um, but this guy ripped... But he ripped the wrong cord. He ripped the emergency cord. And, he, and the, the jump master says, oh, there goes his parachute. And we're like, what the fuck does that mean? Um, and you do. We saw it. You could see, like, the because it jettisons everything except your emergency chute. And we're, we're freaking out. Me and Troy looking at each other. Is this guy plummeting to his death right now? And then we had to ask the jump master. And, and, and he's like, no, no. He just pulled the wrong cord. He's going to end up way far away because... Your original chute is square, and you use toggles, and you can control yourself and can steer a chute like that. Those circular chute, the second chute, the emergency chute, is a circular chute, and you don't get to control that. You're going where the chute goes, just like, you know, that's why they did the, they did such low, when you see those, that footage of the, uh, the, the guys paratrooping down in World War II, they were pretty low um, altitudes, because if there's a wind, you're going where the wind's going. And so they have a truck that would help down on the ground. That truck took off to get that guy. Me and Troy are looking at each other like, ugh, after you. And Troy went next to, to his credit and uh, kind of smiled at me. And, and then I did it. And uh, my experience was uh, ma mostly talking to myself, simultaneously telling myself, this is awesome. And God, I'm going to fucking lose my mind. It, not in a good way either. Like, I, this is the best thing ever. This is the worst thing ever. And uh, floated down, didn't die. Here I am. I know I spent a lot of time on the parachute thing. Um, you know, I just, we were living our asses off, you know? It, like I told you last night about the energy of high school. Same thing with the energy of your early 20s, man. I was doing a lot. Like I said, working full time, schooling full time, partying part time, and jumping out of planes sometimes. Well, one time. <laughs> uh, that, let's see, the, there's too much else to talk about. Oh, in 1990, I did drop acid. I was smoking a little weed, but not a lot during those years. I was a late bloomer. I didn't even have my first beer till I was 17. I smoked pot for the first time when I was 19. I dropped acid when I was 23 in 1990. 
one time. Didn't need to do that again. Got the full experience. Uh, everyone's like, no, you had a bad trip. I go, no, I just don't do non-control very well. I, I, if I feel like I'm getting out of control of something, I don't like it. And so I had a lot of fun on it, but it was also a very stressful thing. I, like I said, dropped acid once, and that was in 1990. Um, let's see. I guess I don't have too much, too much else to talk about. Um, there's probably a lot... But I know that uh, my next segment tomorrow night will cover uh, years 91, 92, 93, where I saw a lot of women in 91 and 92. not going to lie. I did okay. And then in 93, I met my wife. She's not my wife anymore, but uh, that's where the story will take place uh, tomorrow tomorrow night. I hope uh, you're all doing well. Um, And also, I could use some feedback. If these things, if this stuff is boring, if I'm droning on... Let, please let me know. Any comments, any feedback, because here's the thing. I, I'm going to probably start a YouTube channel. I actually have a YouTube channel, but I'm thinking of putting these videos on there and maybe doing a 10-minute segment every night, whether it's just talking about life or talking about state of affairs in the world or the country or just doing some new material, some new jokes. I, 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 this is a thing I want to continue, um, and maybe you guys would like to be interactive in that and possibly give me a subject to talk about or say, hey, can you make a joke about this? Anything you guys want. Um, I'm very appreciative of, of those who have watched and those who will continue to watch. Oh, and Rochelle Berry, I owe you a shout-out. I almost forgot. I did try to get into a three-way with Rochelle and uh, my, I think she was my girlfriend at the time, Lori, and they both denied me, and that was humiliating and uh, funny at the same time. All right, you guys, thanks. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I love y'all, and I appreciate y'all. I'll see you again tomorrow night after the Howl at 8.05. Thank you. Bye.